And I'd say something to other parents, so they need to get a caseworker as soon as possible. I would start with Benton County Mental Health, um, and then they can head you in the right direction as to, you know, funding, activities, programs, schools, different things like that. Yeah, the placement usually comes from caseworker. I think that caseworkers are a very important part of the success because they know um, the residents. It's important for you to let your county services coordinator know what your future plans are. The important thing is to just call us and let us know so we have some time to put something together that fits for your child. The earlier within reason that they move into outside living outside the home, the better off they are because you're not always going to be around. And the longer that transition period is where they still have your support, I think the better it is. We want them to be successful. We want you to feel comfortable with the placement. And a little planning goes a long way in having that happen. Really, a family member would really need to look at their, um, their family member's needs and their abilities um, before determining if they should live, you know, try to live in an apartment that's overseen by somebody. Um, you know, are they that independent? Do they have those skills? Um, or do they need to be placed more in a 24-hour setting, you know, because they don't have those skills to kind of care for themselves. Everybody's different, you know, as was mentioned, some people can live on their own, some people try and cannot. Um, I think that just, uh, I would call it shopping around and seeing what uh, different places, you know, or different homes or different programs they are. I think that parents, though, should investigate all the possibilities that there are out there, go visit the homes. I mean, you do know your own your own child, so, and you can, you can uh, make judgments about whether they, you think they will feel comfortable in this environment or not. Um, I think that you shouldn't, out of desperation, jump into the necessarily the first opportunity that you see. I think that uh, if it doesn't feel right, maybe uh, uh, look around a little bit more. Don't just go visit with the idea of, oh, let's see if it's clean and what they're doing. I mean, really get to know what's in there if they can. If it's possible for them to uh, go spend part of a day in the home and see what it's like. Go and uh, spend an evening in, in the house with, uh, and see how they, they operate on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. No, that it's not forever. You know, if it doesn't work, that there are other options out there and different things come along. I, I really think that parents do need to ask those questions and, and put their expectations out there. Feel free to ask the hard questions. Feel free to really dig in and um, see that you get complete information. Don't, don't ever be afraid to do that, to, to ask the questions. You know, if, if you're worried you're stepping on their toes, step on them because you want your questions answered. You want to know what the, what the home is going to offer you, you know, um, what, what staffing they have, what kind of activities they like to do. Will my child or family member um, be able to do the things that they love to do? Um, will they actually have the, the medical care that I think they should have? Um, am I still going to be able to visit as often as I'd like? You know, things like that. Don't assume that as a parent you are the sole, the sole caregiver for your child. You're the only person qualified to take care of, of your child. Know that, that there are staff who are trained, who are consistently um, being retrained. Tell us what you want us to do, you know, um, if there's certain ways they, that things should be done. You oversee things and, and let staff, staff know you're going to keep in touch and you're going to keep, you know, and, and that everything is going well. But then separate out. By all means, uh, visit your child as often as you can 
Yeah. Particularly when they first come here, they really need that. To, I mean, probably shouldn't come the first couple of days so they can get used to the idea, but yeah. let them know that you still love them and care. Also, just uh, working to set up Kay's room, just yes. how well that went. That's, that's just as much for you as it is for, you know, the individual you're setting the room up. Set it up the way they like it. They like it, what's familiar. And um, if you have worries, By all means, just check. politely, Sam, and check. We go into the homes monthly, and we also sometimes just drop in and check and see how things are going. I think you just need to find some quiet time in your heart and really consider the pros and the cons. I mean, it's not the same as being at home. I can't just wake up and go into her room and, and, and see her there every day. But, you know, if I do want to go see her, she's just, you know, down the road across the street and um, I can see her anytime I want. So now he's got, a, he's got a life that he can enjoy. He goes places, he does things that I would never have taken him to because of the way he acted. And he does them willingly and he goes by the rules and he understands and it's just incredible when you look at group at services and group homes and wherever individuals are being cared for the number one critical issue is socialization that's a key thing is this have have them have lots of uh, uh, social activities where they they'll be with this community for the rest of their lives so they're making lifelong friends young adults are ready they, they want to have that freedom to make their own not necessarily their own decisions but be more more like the adults they see out there when you're around 18 19 or 20 most people are ready to break cut the apron strings and, and leave and I think they are ready too. I really do. But uh, it's you have to be more careful about it. Give them a chance to grow. Give them a chance to learn to be themselves. To have that little ounce of independence that they deserve. Because that will give you a chance as either husband and wife or even yourself, as myself, to grow and to get a life for yourself, knowing that your child is doing the exact same thing. It broke my heart, and I really grieved, but um, it's worked out well. In fact, it's probably the best thing we ever did for her. For her. You say bye-bye to the camera? Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Everybody ready? Ready? Yes. One, One, two, two three. three. It's, it's a wrap! wrap. Hooray! Yay! Yay! We love who eats cookies! Yay! Yay! Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. <laughs> yes! The painting in the background is, is really um, something special because I had two friends that when they found out that she was moving said, we want to paint her room, they're artists. You know, she can't really turn her head a whole lot and they wanted her to, um, you know, have something bright and cheerful to look at. We're using gardening to help people get skills, build skills, and uh, make friendships, and uh, Here's a clean one. just get outside, what did George go? fresh air. Uh, you can't the other one. And so now we just make stuff out of them. Do you want that big a bunch or you want to break it in half? I uh, know. That's fine. That's fine? Okay. There you go. And this is one of my favorite flowers. Anybody seen TJ anywhere? Peekaboo! There he is. <laughs> Get put in the box. 
Today, aren't you? Mm. Boo. Mm. <laughs> you put that one in the box. Mm. That's the box. 